Some of the most remarkable people in this world don't appear on movie screens or in sports arenas. They work in offices, study in classrooms, and raise families at home. They're just ordinary people like you and I. Ordinary people who happen to have experienced something extraordinary and survived. Off the Map is a travel television series I directed and shot over a 12-year period. Unlike most explorer stories, these modern travelers are women. Ordinary women who agreed to be filmed taking journeys to extraordinary places. For the Galapagos program, I was joined by our female host, Christine. Our intention was to travel from Quito, Ecuador's capital, to the Galapagos Islands. I landed in the city of Quito in Ecuador and had some time to explore before we set on to our cruise of the Galapagos. The center point of the old city is crowned by the statue of the Virgin. As I gaze over the city, feeling the force of the wind and the views of the mountains, it was spectacular. I was surrounded by Ecuadorian families flying the kites in the wind as the wind just tossed them around, kites that were made out of newspaper, tracing paper, kites that were more elaborate in design that flew as high, if not higher, than where I was standing on the statue. Watching the kites fly around me, the anticipation of my trip lay before me. I was excited and looking forward to the cruise around the Galapagos Islands, which I knew that uh, we would visit about five different uh, points on at least six different islands in a total of 13 islands. Galapagos is world famous for its incredibly fearless and unique wildlife. Approaching the islands on a cruise on uh, the beautiful boat that I was on was serene. Santa Cruz is the second largest island in the archipelago. Hiking through the highlands of Santa Cruz Island was a real pleasure. The forest was really quite diverse. It was a uh, jungle-like terrain. My guide, Yvonne, was really quite knowledgeable about the identification of the different plants and birds. Look, Chris, a vermilion flycatcher. Wow, it's beautiful. It's the only land bird in Galapagos that is not black and gray. It's all colored. Is that right? Look at the color, it's just bright reds. Oh, there yes. it goes. The Charles Darwin Research Station has a walk-in adult tortoise enclosure where you can meet these Galapagos giants face to face. The giant tortoises are among the most unique animals on the Galapagos Islands. Hello, little guy. They are majestic to look at. They do look 200 years old. <laughs> um, possibly some of them are. There are two types of shells. There is a dome shape, like the one we see right here, and then we have the saddleback. The tortoises are of great interest to the Charles Darwin Foundation, and they've paid a lot of attention in reintroducing different races onto the islands. What they do is they have a symbiosis with the birds like uh, small ground finches, like mockingbirds, they will come and peck all the insects, all the parasites actually that they have. Right. And uh, tortoises will help them. They will stretch all the legs and the neck, exposing all these difficult areas so that the birds can come and peck them without any problem. You see, yeah. they don't have any teeth. It right. looks like a parrot or like a bird beak. It's, right. it ha they have a horn and plate and they just bite off a piece. They don't really um, chew it and they just swallow it. So they don't... Then they're vegetarian. And they're vegetarian. <laughs> you can see if you're a vegetarian, you can grow that old. The famous tortoises are so popular that the people that live on the island have been coming to the spot 
to have their wedding photographs taken. The next island that we visited was Bartholomew. It was a relatively new island with new vegetation on new lava flow. Each island that we went to had to be approached by a dinghy. It was either a wet or a dry landing. My guide, Fernanda, was extremely knowledgeable and lots of fun as well. She had lots of information about the islands and their ecology. She had mentioned to me that we must keep within the parameters of the trail in order to protect the environment. As we hiked up, the scenery became increasingly more and more incredible. The view of the ocean and the landscape was spectacular. The name of that island is uh, Santiago or James Island. Look at the, the landscape from here, it's very beautiful with the beach and the Pinnacle Rock, the most famous geologic formation that we have here in, in the Galapagos Islands. And that's a very good place to make a snorkel and swim because the people can uh, uh, find easily the sharks. Oh yeah, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. They get eaten by them, do they? No. No, 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 of course. <laughs> so the sharks are very friendly here in the Galapagos yeah. Island. Here you can see the most frequently photographed and hence most famous vista in the islands. Our journey then continued on to the next island on the following day. The largest island in the archipelago is Isabella. As Fernanda pointed out, it was an older island, so it therefore had more growth and more forest. We hiked across a small beach and then into the forest, where, if you were quiet enough, you would be able to view the surrounding birds. Look at that little bird there. The yellow one? Yeah. That one is the yellow wobbler. Oh yeah. See? That's the female with yeah. a, a yellow, light yellow coloration on the feathers. Right. The, the male has a, a strong yellow coloration on the feathers with a little uh, part uh, red on the head, on the top of the head. Right. And that's the difference between the female and the male. Oh, I see. It's, the color is beautiful oh, on it's it. Oh, very it's, nice. It's very, it's very beautiful. That's the sound that they make. Oh, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Galapagos hawks, short-eared owls, finches and flycatchers are among the birds commonly seen on this trip. Look at the lani one over there. Oh, I see it. Can you see the color that uh, that one has uh, with yeah. a yellow or a brown color? Uh -huh. It's the same color of the ground here. It's uh, like a camouflage that they use. Can you tell if that's a female or a male? Or? So the, fe the male is a little bit more longer than the female. Uh -huh. I think that one oh. is a female. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. It's very oh. fat, so yeah. that one <laughs> yeah. can uh, find easily a lot of uh, food around, especially they eat cactus. Right. And uh, look at the other one over there coming. That's the male. Uh -huh. Look at the movement that that one has with the yeah, head. With the neck. Uh, he's a little bit angry. He is. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he knows we're here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Before in this archipelago, the people eat the, the, the iguanas. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The land iguana is one of the species that we have here in Galapagos that is in danger of extinction. That's the reason why the people of the National Park and the Charles Darwin Station are making a very, a very good uh, uh, work trying to eradicate all the introduced animals that we have uh, on the islands. Later on that afternoon, we approached an island that had quite a rough and rocky coastline, providing many small shallow pools for fish to swim in and birds to catch their prey. Are those um, pelicans? Oh yes, those are uh, pelicans, the brown pelicans that are 
feeding in this area. This is a very rich area with a lot of food, a lot of oh, fish. Yeah. And that's the reason why they are here feeding. Lunch this. time, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Lunch time. Yeah. <laughs> Look, they are uh, younger brown pelicans uh, learning how they, they can get the, the food in this area. Look at that, huh? Like torpedoes. Yeah, that's the amazing, water. eh? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. 90 Look. degree angle, bang, down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like how many different types of birds do we have here? We have species that you will see just here in the Galapagos Islands. And we have other species that are uh, migratory species that come from other uh, parts of the world and make the nests and the islands. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Look at the frigate bird over there. Fernanda then led me on a trail that um, took us up to a higher altitude on the islands where we could get a view of the rolling hills covered by Palo Santos trees from which they make the incense that we burn in churches. The vegetation that you can see around of this area is called holy stick. Right. Mm -hmm. It smells very well, very, very sweet. And the people use that in, uh, into their houses uh, to put out the, the mosquitoes. The hill continued up where we were able to look over Darwin Lake. Fernanda explained to me what was so, so different about this lake. This is from a natural formation and uh, uh, the water from the sea come into the crater as you see here. Wow, this lake is beautiful. Yes, it was formed by uh, natural uh, filtrations of water from the sea right. into, the, into the crater. Mm -hmm. How deep is it? It's uh, more or less nine meters deep. Oh, nine meters deep. So it's not very deep at all. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so you cannot uh, find uh, um, any kind of life into the lake because the water is very, very salty. Oh, is that right? Yeah, very, very. Not salty. too many fish or anything no, like that. No, definitely no. Uh, yeah. During the rain season, we have a very thin layer of uh, sweet water on the surface. Uh, that the, the migratory birds, especially, arrive to this lake and drink that water. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. It must uh, taste good to them, I'm sure, oh, after. Yes, sure. <laughs> Fernanda and I then hiked up to the top of Isabella Island. She showed me a view of some of the five volcanoes that made up the island. Some of the volcanoes were active. In fact, one of the volcanoes the year previously had exploded. I was a bit glad, and yet at the same time a bit sad, that I had missed that. The volcanoes were covered by clouds, so we couldn't get a good view of them. But the vista was an incredible sight to see. This lava, this uh, uh, formation of uh, the lava here in Galapagos, we call Pajoy Hoy. Pajoy Hoy. is a Hawaiian word that we use here in Galapagos. In the other side of the island, uh, we can find the other kind of lava that we call Aa. Uh Aa. -uh. Uh -uh. Because it's very difficult to walk in that, in that kind of lava, and if you try, you will say Ay 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 or Ay Ay. Ay Ay Ay. Right. <laughs> It was incredible how many different kinds of wildlife there were. Wherever I walked, there was always something else to see. The highlight of the cruise was a visit to Fernandina Island where 
the marine iguanas lay their eggs and the fur seals give birth. This is an island on which you are most likely to see a volcanic eruption. Look at the animals there, those are the marine iguanas. In this island, Fernandina, uh, we can find a very big colony of them living together in the same area as you see here, because mm -hmm. they are trying to keep the normal temperature on their bodies. Right. Because mm -hmm. when they are, uh, when they go into the water, they have a very, very low heart, heart system. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. It slows right down. Right? Yeah, very, very slow, like How dying. long can they last in the water? They can go into the water uh, 45 until 60 minutes. Wow, they that's are quite a long time, actually. Yeah. Right? yeah, they are very good divers, and they can uh, be into the water for, for a long, for a long time. <laughs> yeah, what's the um, crown on their heads? That's salt. When oh. they go into the water looking for food, mm -hmm. they uh, drink a lot of salt water. Mm -hmm. So when they come to the island on uh, land, they have to uh, put all of that uh, salt water out of their bodies. Oh. And that's the reason uh, that uh, uh, why they spit salt water from their noses. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. And is there any way to tell um, how old they are at all? Or Oh, they can live difficult? until... Difficult? Yes, it's, it's a little bit difficult, but the most bigger and the most fat iguanas are the most older. Oh, the fatter the yeah. older, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. They can live until uh, 60 years old without any problem. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, 60 years old. 60 years old. Wow, that's mm -hmm. quite a long time. The marine iguanas and the lava black rock melded into one, and it was difficult to see the camouflaged iguanas. But as you concentrated long enough and, and gazed long enough on them, their characteristics became quite amusing to watch as they cradled each other for warmth and slithered into the water looking for their food. Look at the marine iguanas over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are resting because they had a very, very hard day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't think that an animal so coarse on its appearance could be so graceful when it was in the water. I had no idea that iguanas could swim so well. Our final destination was San Salvador, or James Island. Here there is a long, flat, black lava shoreline where eroded shapes form lava pools, caves, and inlets that house a great variety of wildlife. This is a great place to see colonies of marine iguanas basking in the sun. Fernanda pointed out the island to me from a distance earlier in the trip and we decided it would be a good place for me to finish my journey. It was really wonderful to have a chance to hike around on my own. Further on along um, in the island, there was a lagoon. I noticed uh, two flamingos standing in the water off to the side. What was remarkable about them was I found that their fantastic coloring in shades of pink and red and white and in their feathers resemble the shrimp that they eat. I believe it's the carotene that turns the feathers to make the color so vivid. I was told if I followed a trail around the coast I would 
reach a grotto-like area where the sea lions um, will put on a, a playful display for me. I hiked along the trail and along the coastline to an area where I found the sea lions basking in the sun and playing in the water, doing various different um, ballerina-like moves. They were really quite uh, fun and interesting to watch for a long period of time. Traveling to the Galapagos Islands has led me to several different conclusions on how I see the world that we live with the creatures that live with us. And seeing firsthand these rare creatures gives you an insight as to how frail nature can be, yet the endurance nature has to persevere and survive. The wildlife is truly phenomenal. The scenery is barren and volcanic and has a haunting beauty all its own. I saw the respect and care that the tour guides had about the islands. They were very concerned about keeping the islands ecologically sound and I feel that with a growing awareness amongst people, the islands will continue to thrive. A visit to the Galapagos is for the wilderness and wildlife enthusiast, not for the average sun seeker. <laughs>